Good morning everyone. This is the third day of the ESC 2025 and we are reporting from Madrid, Spain. And we are having the pleasure to have Professor Niebi from University of Edinburgh to discuss the results of the dual ACS trial, which is one of the hotlines of the ESC this year. So Professor Niebi, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much. And my first question directly is about the background of the dual ACS trial. What made you think to, to, to conduct a, yes. such a study? What was your objective? There have been lots of duration of, of dual antiplatelet therapy trials, but actually when you actually get to the nitty gritty, there are very few actual placebo control trials that have been done. Comparing other different agents, all that sort of thing have been done. But actually the CURE trial, the original trial, was the first one to do that. And actually since then, there have been no trials that have looked at no dual antiplatelet therapy versus dual antiplatelet therapy in the 12 months after. And particularly beyond the three-month initial period. So that's why we came up with the dual ACS. We want to compare three versus 12 months, which has never actually been specifically addressed in myocardial infarction patients. So... What patients, uh, according to my understanding from your great presentation, uh, it was an all-commerce study, right? What That's was right. the population of the study? So basically, we went into the hospitals and we said, we want anyone that's had a heart attack, a type 1 MI, and we don't mind what dual antiplatelet therapy you put them on, yeah. but as long as they've had a type 1 and have on dual antiplatelet therapy, we want to randomize them to 3 or 12 months as long as the clinician is happy that they could receive either. Mm -hmm. So there were no bleeding um, exclusion criteria. There were no other specific criteria other than those three things. Type 1 MI, dual antiplatelet therapy, and equipoise about the duration of therapy so that we could get everyone. So uh, this means that this study really reflects the real world. The real world the real, real practice. And what about the results of this study? What was the primary endpoints and the results? So the primary endpoint was all-cause death because there's a lot of data and meta-analyses suggesting that longer durations of therapy cause more bleeding and have a hazard of mortality. So the, so the actual primary endpoint was all-cause mortality at 15 months, because obviously you stop at 12 months and there's rebound effects, so we wanted to capture all of that. And what we found was, unfortunately, the trial was underpowered because it was stopped early because of COVID. Um, so we wanted 17,000 and we got 5,000. So we were underpowered to ask that. But what we found was a hazard ratio of 0.78 in favor of the dual antiplatelet therapy. There was uh, the p-value is 0.12, sorry, 1-2, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a um, borderline, uh, not statistically significant, but it was exactly the same hazard ratio as previous meta-analyses have suggested for mortality. So we have signals. We have signals. Yeah. And actually, <clears throat> consistent with prior data, there was a small excess of MI, a really small excess of MI in the three-month group, uh, but there was a lot less bleeding in the three-month group. Yeah. So overall, um, minimal benefit, big signals of harm, and I think the guidelines really do need to reevaluate this because the, the guidelines that currently stands, I think there is no class 1A evidence that 12 months should be the default therapy because there has, apart from the CURE trial and the dual ACS trial, yeah. There hasn't been an all-commerce trial to show that. Yeah. So you're expecting to, uh, to a switch in the guidelines? to Well, to I change. suspect the guideline will say, well, this is yeah. underpowered study data yeah. and you've not got significance. But I think when you take it in the context of the prior CURE trial, you take it in the context of all the meta-analyses that have been done showing signals of harm, and then the dual ACS, which is showing these signals are real, mm -hmm. we really do need to say, why do you need to give 12 months? What are you trying to achieve? So if you're not preventing that many MIs and you're causing a lot of bleeding and mortality is going the wrong way, why would you? Why not just give three months? So let's see the, yeah. results, the yeah. clinical impact of the study in the future. Thank you so much, Professor Nibi, for, for sharing your insightful comments with us. And we want to thank uh, Professor Nibi again for, for accepting our kind invitation. And please stay tuned for more interviews and more hotline, more results of the hotlines Uh, from the ESC 2025. Thank you so much for listening to us.